Tennessee to Richmond, Virginia, and on to the Granite State of New Hampshire. That's been the schedule over the last eight days. Today, the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series sees a bit of a break at the end of a tough run. Today, from New Hampshire International Speedway, NASCAR's exciting trucks are next. It is the 18th of 24 races on the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series schedule, going 200 laps, and it's an interesting qualifying order. The north against the south as we go north of the Mason-Dixon line. The front row has a southerner and a northerner. Let's go to Glenn Jarrett. Well, and starting on the pole is a guy that everybody knows in the truck series by one one thousandth of a second. Mike Skinner, fresh off a of victory from Richmond. Can you do it again today, buddy? Well, Glenn, I don't know. Uh, you know, this team's been good at winning two in a row, but, uh, you know, we're not completely out of this points battle yet, so we've got to race pretty smart. And there's some guys up here in the front that uh, don't have anything to lose in points. Uh, Jax, he, he needs to make a good statement in points. We're going to do the best we can. We're going to try to get out of there with the top five, Glenn. Okay, best of luck to Mike Skinner starting right behind him, Jack Sprague. Now, he is the guy who, when the truck series has been to a one-mile track this year, he has won every race on a one-mile track except the first one at Homestead. Jack Sprague, number 24, watch out for him today. He'll be tough. Here's Matt Yoakum. Well, Glenn, he may be one-mile man, but this is another mile man, Joe Bessie. He's won here in the Bush North cars. Hey, a good start for you today, your first start in the trucks, starting outside, kind of a... A north versus south thing here. You finished second in the Bush North race. Can you do it in the trucks? Yeah, I think we can. We got a good piece here. Uh, great to have the sponsorship from Fisher Snowplows, which allowed us to run this race here. Uh, missed the inaugural Bush race here, so I'm glad to be part of the inaugural truck race. And it's just my kind of track. September's been good to me here. We've won here the last two years on uh, the Bush North segment. And just uh, looking forward to just taking it easy, getting the feel for these radials. They're quite a bit different than the bias tires that the Bush North cars run. Just going to bite our time until the halfway mark. Well, he hopes a sandwich between his two Bush North wins here in September, a truck win. And, of course, outside of the front row is Steve Park, who's from Long Island, New York. So, hence, you've got the north and the south, which is certainly appropriate here at New Hampshire International Speedway. Coming up, the start of this 200-lapper, $281,000 plus on the line. We're back in a moment. To roll, and we're set for 200 laps for the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. Mike Skinner and Steve Park sharing the front row. Skinner off the win at Richmond. Row number two, Jack Sprague and Joe Bessie is run here today. Joe Ruckman going for Jack Roush and Bob Keselowski, a great qualifying effort. Brian Reffner and the series point leader, Ron Hornaday. Nathan Butkey and on down the line. There's Bobby Gill. Good to see him back on the series. Mike Bliss and Dave Resendiz, a winner a couple of uh, races ago. Harry Gann is here. So is Rich Bickle, John Nimichek, and Lance Norick in the 94 truck. Rick Corelli, and you see Boris said he qualified that truck for Ernie Irvin, but Ernie will go to the back of the field, hopping in the 28 machine. Kenny Allen and Bill Sedgwick. Rob Rizzo from Trans Am and Doug George. Bob Brevac and Lebanon, Pennsylvania's Bobby Gerhardt sharing the 13th throw as the field now is two laps away from going green. Walker Evans and Jeff Spraker for the NASCAR Bush North Series. Kenny Bouchard, great to see him making his debut in a truck. And Mike Hurlburt bringing out the field to its full 30 truck starters. Normally, we would be showing you a number of nice in-truck cameras, but the way those machines work is that the signal is bounced up off a helicopter that hovers overhead the racetrack. But with the ceiling as low as it is, there is the helicopter. Unfortunately, not able to fly and bring you. That's what uh, they would have to be looking through, and the uh, conditions just not warranting to take that kind of a chance. So we'll keep the helicopter on the ground, and we trust uh, you understand why as we'll bring you the action of this 200 lapper. Let's bring you up to speed on the rules. There will be a competition yellow called at the quarter and the three-quarter mark of the event here today. 
competition yellows if you're not familiar you were put in when NASCAR realized that at certain racetracks these trucks just couldn't go the distance at least a halfway on fuel so somewhere between lap 45 and 55 and again somewhere between lap 145 and 155 the yellow will fly for fuel to come on board. The halftime money from Gatorade will be paid at lap number 100. The halftime break of five minutes will go at lap 101. So that is the setup for today's event. If you're just joining us for the first time today, we'll mention again the turns are banked just 12 degrees. The straightaways are flat and 1,500 feet long as this is the third event of a busy triple header day here at New Hampshire. Ted Christopher won the Bush North Series race. Tony Hirschman a few moments ago winning the NASCAR Featherlight Modified Tour event. And now Larry McReynolds and Buddy Baker, time to go truck racing. Yes, it is. And, and you know, even though we've, we've had 250 laps of racing here at Loudoun today, those divisions put a different type of rubber on the racetrack. So what I think these truck drivers has got to do is not make any predetermined calls as to how their truck's handling. Let the track get their type of rubber on it and then see where their, where their trucks are handling. We've seen McCreary tires. We've seen Hoosiers and Goodyear's of bias ply design. Now we go to the uh, Goodyear Racing Radials as we get set to go. Here comes the pace truck. Mike Simons at the wheel from Marion, Virginia. He'll actually right there, pull the Get car ready. away, actually. Not a pace truck today. Go, 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 go! And the green is in the air. The exhorting from the pit lane to go, go, go. And indeed, they do. Everybody went with Joe Messi. He dropped back about five or six truck lengths going down into turn one. Look at Steve Park take the lead as they come off turn two. Steve Park as they scramble. There's Bessie holding up Jimmy Hensley in the 30. Everybody else went by to the inside. Whoa, Steve Park went in the corner really hard then and washed up the racetrack. He gave Mike Skinner a real good run coming down the front straightaway. Now the background here is that Steve Park is subbing for Mike McLaughlin, who was to have been in Kurt Warwick's truck here today. But when the NASCAR Bush Series got rained out Friday in Richmond and they had to run earlier today, that meant McLaughlin couldn't be here and Park hopped into Kurt Warwick's truck. And I don't come to Steve Park. Problems on turn here. number two. Kenny Allen in the 65 truck and, and Kenny Ken Bouchard in the number one end up together there off the corner. And here comes Steve Park to the stripe. And we are under caution. Kenny Allen and Kenny Bouchard. So at lap number two, the yellow flies. Buddy, let's talk about this. And, and Larry, you, you add in certainly the same. We have seen Park go from the Bush North car to that ground pounding modified, now to a bit more of a lumbering kind of truck. How long does it take, do you think, Buddy, for a, a guy like this, as talented as he is, but still, there's got to be an adjustment period, huh? It has to be a, an adjustment, but he has practiced all three divisions this weekend, so he has a feel for what he needs to do. As uh, Larry says, the good part is right now, you'll go through a learning curve, but you'll also be getting on the uh, modified rubber that was laid down in the race prior to this. So everybody's kind of guessing right now as to what's, what they need for later on. I think Steve Park right now has one thing in his favor. He's been on the racetrack more than most of the people out there. Good point, Matt Yoakum. You've been hanging with Steve much of the day today. What do you think? Well, I'll tell you what, Eli, this morning, if you're wondering why Steve got such a good jump on Mike Skinner, he spent the morning with Ron Hornaday. Ron pulled out a couple of his little matchbox trucks and showed him how to restart against Mike Skinner. Obviously, it worked. He also mentioned that if he's got a restart right behind Mike Skinner, how Skinner's tendencies are to maybe fool you a little bit. But he never quite mentioned what to do if Skinner's behind you. I guess he's going to have to learn that one out of his, out his own. Pit stops for Kenny Allen. There you see the 65 truck being worked on. And Kenny Bouchard is also in. Here's what happened again off the corner. Looks like Kenny Allen had got sideways, tried to correct it, and it went back the other way on him, and he's sliding down the back stretch up against the outside retaining wall, and uh, he's sitting there, and Kenny Bouchard just has to get on the binder, maybe touch the wall just a little bit with his right side. 
So we are getting set to go back to green. The chief starter for the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series, Chris Morgan from Santa Barbara, California. He is atop the flag stand, as we mentioned. Mike Simons from Marion, Virginia, is the pace car driver for this tour. Most instances, they do indeed use a pace truck, but here today, the pace car. And the green is in the air. See Joe Rutman now. He started out in fourth spot. He's already moved to third. You see him moving on the inside of Skinner as they head down into turn one. There's Butch Miller and Mike Bliss, the 98 of the two, middle of the pack. Jack Spray getting crowded there. He's in that green and white truck as he gets with Rutman. And there goes Hornaday, the 16 to the outside, says, if you guys are going to play like that, I'm getting out of here. I'm going to tell you what, Hornaday is brave enough to go bear hunting with the switch. Did you see that move? Three wide going down in the turn three, and he made the move and moved all the way up to third spot. He wasn't going to be the one to back off. No. He's leading the points by 54. Remember that, folks, over Skinner, who is second in points. Moved up to the high line in the middle of one and two and then brought it back down the bottom. Falls in line behind Skinner down the back straight. Now, this is not Steve Park's first time in a truck. Remember at Watkins Glen, he qualified for Joe Nimichek, who was in Bristol for the weekend there. And qualified on the push pole. So he's very familiar with the weight of these trucks and how they work. We are six laps into this 200 lapper. He was also in Indianapolis, Park was. He drove for Walker Evans in that instance. See Joe Rutman there. He was tagged just a few seconds ago. There's a little bit of contact, but I think his truck's okay. As they go by a lap truck, as they go down in the corner there, you can see Mike Skinner coming off the corner there. He's got good drive, but right now I don't think he's quite as fast as our leader. There is Rutman having moved around Brian Reffner. How about your Winston Cup driver, Ernie Irvin, having to go to the tail end of the field because of the driver change? What kind of a challenge as we watch the scramble now between Refter and Butke for sixth and seventh? How much of a challenge for Ernie Irvin? Is he like that almost? Oh, I think he enjoys it. And uh, just looking at scoring, he's uh, picked off about 11 positions in seven laps. So I know he's really enjoying that. And I know he told those guys, he said, look, Here's the setup that we won the race with back in July. You put this under this truck, let Boris qualify, and no matter what, don't change that truck. So uh, he come in here cold this morning and looks like he's moving up steadily. And I know he's pr probably pretty proud of his 44 truck right now because they struggled the other night at Richmond. And that's for the lead right there. Mike Skinner grabs the spot away from Steve Park. He will take over the lead here at lap number nine. So. Our first lead change of the afternoon for the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. Mike Skinner shows the way in New Hampshire. The Truck Series here at New Hampshire International Speedway. Welcome back, Eli Gold with Larry McReynolds, Buddy Baker, Glenn Jarrett, Matt Yoakum, the entire TNN Motorsports crew here with this big, big triple header of racing. Skinner is the leader, but the story may be the guy in second spot, Sprague, or potentially Mike Bliss there in the number two truck. He and Jimmy Hensley now working in the ninth and tenth positions, respectively. Bliss likes some of these flatter mile truck, or tracks, I should say, but certainly no better than Jack Sprague. Sprague, he's in that green and white Quaker State truck right there. He is going for a sweep of the series one-mile track. So he already has wins in Phoenix, a win at Nazareth, Pennsylvania, a win at the Milwaukee Mile in uh, Wisconsin back in July. So he'd like to sweep up the whole package here today. Eli, what a great break for Steve Park. He's running against three of the best in the truck division, and there's some talk that he is going to move into this division for next year. He can sit there and watch what three of the best of all times in the trucks, how they run around the racetrack and what they do to really get the back. This is what, the uh, fourth of five events that are being run on tracks where this series has never run. They've yet to go to Las Vegas later in the season. But as far as being on this racetrack in these kind of vehicles and these trucks, nobody has any more experience than anybody else. That's exactly right. But, you know, and I think that's one reason NASCAR could see justice to schedule Richmond, Virginia on Thursday night and here on Sunday is because the setup for these trucks, other than maybe a little difference in gearing, 
is pretty close. You, you didn't really have to change a whole lot as long as you didn't have a problem at Richmond. There you see Joe Rutman. I, I believe he's got the fastest truck on the racetrack right now. His truck, he's really able to drive it in deep. It really sticks on the bottom, and he's zooming in on that number one spot and trying to overtake Skinner. Winless this year. I'm sure that Joe Rutman would certainly like to put this Roush truck right in the winter circle. There you see how he has advanced through what is now 17 laps. Outside Rutman. Outside Sprague. It happens that quickly in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. Skinner goes from first potentially to third or fourth off the corner. He's got a problem. He's not running Looks down like the straightaway it. at the moment. They'll give Joe Rutman the lead now here at lap number 18. Skinner is definitely off the pace. Skinner's got a problem. Glenn, what are they saying down there? Well, some smoke coming out of the left side of the Do you have a problem? Yeah, right now he said the motor is in acting right, so we're not sure what it is right now. We'll just have to see if we can finish. All right, so he's definitely got a problem. As he went by the lap, two laps ago, just as he passed the start finish line about halfway down to turn one, big cloud of smoke came out of that truck. There goes Hornaday bypassing him. Now remember, Skinner was 54 points down, and there you saw the puff of smoke again. Skinner's win on Thursday at Richmond did clinch the Manufacturers Championship for Chevrolet trucks. But he's looking at the big picture right now, and there's another puff of smoke. He may not like the picture he's seeing here this afternoon. 19 of 200 laps are in the books. Joe Rutman having taken the lead from Steve Park and Mike Skinner now leads here in New Hampshire. At New Hampshire International Speedway, Joe Rutman showing the way in his Jack Roush truck. There's Ernie Irvin. He's up to 15th spot now, Larry Mack. Yeah, his, his truck's definitely working good. I was watching it a while ago. It's working right on the bottom. Seems to be working about like we had the uh, Winston Cup car working in July. He's hanging right against that yellow line. Biggest thing, I told him last night, you just got to show patience. You got 200 laps to get to the front, and, and you gotta, you're going to have a good truck, and you just, you're just going to have to bide your time and uh, pass. Don't push the envelope too hard. How much input do you have on these trucks? Even though the trucks, in the case of Refner and Ernie in particular, don't come from Robert Gates racing obviously there's you care about the man uh, do you have any involvement uh, hands on or otherwise not really but you know again I keep stressing the word team and you know Ernie's got some good people working on his truck you know he's got Jay Smith the crew chief and a lot of good guys working over there Brian Refner's a hands-on mechanic on the truck but you know any way we can help Ernie's truck team Dale Jarrett's Bush team that's just part of complimenting the whole package of the Dale Jarrett Ernie Irvin Robert Gates cluster and anything we can do to help them and likewise they do the same for us there is Ernie challenging Butch Miller right now in 13th spot. Glenn, why don't you join this conversation? Because you're in a racing family in a situation. Well, I just got a question for Larry. Now, we've already heard his comment a while ago about how well Ernie listened. Does he really listen to you when you tell him stuff like that? Well, I don't think so. He don't look like he's showing a lot of patience right now. <laughs> <laughs> he's closed in on Joe Bessie, Ernie Irvin has, moving up to the 12th spot. You see, uh, just in front of these two trucks there, that's uh, Harry Gant, who had a good chance of winning the race not long ago yeah. up in uh, Nashville. And Harry's really loving what he's doing right now. I said, are you going to do this again next year? He said, you bet. This is the most fun I've ever had in a race. A series of Trump. schedules. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to make me say it today. There you go. A series of unscheduled stops for Lance Norick. His truck back on the pit lane again. There you see a quick look at his entry, fielded by his dad, who is the mayor of Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Eli, while we was at break, uh, the Jeff Spraker truck hit, hit pit road. They raised the hood and pushed it into the garage area, so they has done for that uh, truck. And there's Mike Skinner, who has really slowed significantly now. Had an engine problem, he reported to the crew. We heard from Will Lind a short while ago. And you see, he's, what, six miles an hour. Well, more than that, what am I saying? 26 miles an hour off the pace of a few moments ago. Larry, I'd say that valve has probably made as many tours through that chamber as it can make right now. It's probably visited every piston in that engine as he starts down the front straightaway. He's down to a crawl. It won't be long before they call him in. Exactly. Six wins, three poles, 
14 top fives and 14 top tens. That is in 17 races. Significant, but it's not going to last apparently today. But there's a man who is looking for his first victory of the year, Joe Rutman. And the Roush Performance Products Ford truck leading here in New Hampshire. National Speedway. Mike Skinner has brought his truck to the attention of the crew, and it sounded real sick, Glenn Jarrett, when it came down the pit lane. That's not a pretty sound. You may not be able to hear me, Eli, for the noise that the truck's making. Uh, they try switching ignitions. They're, they're uh, working under the hood, but this is a terminal situation. He was running the truck as fast as he could run it. This is just really sick. He's not going to be able to last much longer. In fact, NASCAR won't let him stay out too much longer at the rate he's running. I got a weed eater to sound just exactly <laughs> like that at home. And now I imagine my weed eater's got about as much power as that three truck does right at the moment. That's too bad. The thing about it, it didn't look like they could do anything to correct the problem. And the sick feeling, you look up on that scoreboard and there's 165 laps to go. And yeah. uh, you know it's it's not going to make it. Probably not even going to be able to run up to speed to NASCAR specifications. There's Ernie Urban in the 28 truck making a move inside of Nathan Bucky. That's up to eighth place right now for Ernie Urban. Again, if you're not familiar, Ernie, of course, in Richmond yesterday winning the NASCAR Winston Cup race. His truck was qualified by Boris Said the third, the team manager there. And then when Ernie came in late last night, early this morning, what did you guys get here, Larry? Uh, we laid down at 3.30. I set my alarm for 5.30, and I said, why bother? <laughs> But that's why Ernie had to go to the back of the field as uh, he took over the driving chores from Boris said the third and there is Ernie Irvin in the 1-800 collect truck. Well it's good that Ernie's listened to everything you told him about not running too hard right at first. He's all the way up to eighth place now and I mean he must be a half a second quicker than any truck on the, on the field right now. If they were to have a caution he would be right in the thick of things I believe. You know, Eli, buddy, this is the same tire that we run here on the Winston Cup cars in July, and it was an awesome tire that Goodyear brought here. We, we run our left sides almost 200 laps. Now, the variable is a little bit different surface, especially in the upper groove of the corners. Don't know that that's going to play a role in it, but Ernie has a good feel for this tire as well as for the setup for this racetrack. And, of course, that was a race that Ernie Irvin won, as you saw right here on TNN Motorsports. There he is moving in on Mike Bliss now in the number two truck. No change up front, if you're curious. Joe Rutman, for the time being, is pulled away by 10 truck lengths on Jack Sprague, so you're missing nothing of the battle for the lead. Honestly, there isn't one right now. So we're watching Ernie Irvin make his way closer to the front, closing on Bliss. You know, as good as Ernie's running right now, track position is so important here. Although he's moving up through the field, he's almost a half a lap back of the leader right now. That's the thing, you know, every time he has to contend with some traffic, Ruffman out there in clear sailing, he's just putting more distance on Ernie and these guys, and uh, Ernie's just going to have to take them one at a time. As he moves around Bliss there on the outside, coming through three and four, that should move him up to uh, sixth position. The full field standing, you see, being brought to you by the original Vent Visor, the most practical accessory for your truck. You know something? 53 weeks from now, we're going to be back here. This is going to be the time span for the second NASCAR Winston Cup visit to New Hampshire, uh, mid-September of 97. I wonder if Ernie and you, I bet you there's going to be some notes learned from today as to what kind of differences there are between uh, July and September at this racetrack, because we'll be here for a Winston Cup event this date a year from now. I'm sure we'll learn a lot from it. Again, I, as I mentioned just a few moments ago, the little bit different surface in the corners, he'll learn for a feel for that but it looks like the setup for this truck that we used in July is working good here today but uh, we're looking forward to coming here twice to loud next year it's an awesome facility the Bears has done a great job Eli the one thing we have to tell the fans is even though Ernie and those guys are back a half a lap right now they're going to have some yellows here in a little while competition yellows to bring these car trucks in whoa that got burned right yeah, there it did. yeah it did no more perfect I was four in a row without saying it one buck Anyway, what I'm saying is they'll have a competition yelling that'll bring everybody right up together again. And they'll be, <laughs> yeah, they're shooting at me up here, guys. <laughs> <laughs> 
Joe Rutman is the leader over Jack Sprague, who runs in the second spot. We are within three laps of opening that window for the competition cautions. We'll talk about them in a moment. Today's exclusive TNN coverage of the Pennzoil VIP Discount Auto Center's triple header is brought to you by the new Dodge. We're thinking ahead. And by the original vent visor, the most practical accessory for your truck. Welcome back, everybody. The lead battle has tightened up as Joe Ruckman has been caught by Jack Sprague. The reason, in part, is because that truck, the 44 of Brian Refner, spun moments ago, and some were expecting a caution. Here's what happened after Ernie Irvin had just passed him. Refner, it's the 44 there. You see the back of the truck start out as he turns there, come off turn two there. Man, he's along for the ride, but what's this great catch here? He learned that somewhere besides here, I can promise you. If you'll notice, the tires never quit spinning, so hopefully, probably, he did not flat spot those tires. All the while, Ernie Urban has moved up to the fourth spot. You've got Joe Rutman, the leader. Jack Sprague is second. Steve Park is still in third. Then Urban, Hornaday, Bliss, Jimmy Hensley, Butch Miller, Nathan Butke, and Refner. And then Harry Gant. You saw Harry in his truck there, the number 33. And here's a good scramble as they go around Kenny Bouchard. But no chance for Sprague to make a pass. Well, Jack's been working, trying to catch back up to Rutman. And you can see he's right on his tailgate now. I would say any lap now, we're going to see this competition yellow. And uh, when this comes out somewhere between 45 and 55, and we're working on lap 50 right now, the trucks can pit, make normal pit stop changes, can add fuel, but no tires. No tires at all can be added. So just normal changes in some fuel, and they'll go back to racing to the halfway point. And caution is out now. The competition yellow has just been shown by chief starter Chris Morgan. It comes out at lap number 50. Let's mention those of you who might be tuning in right now to see Bill Jordan's real tree outdoors due to the length of our triple header here at New Hampshire today. Bill Jordan's real tree outdoors will be seen at 8 o'clock Eastern time this evening. So if you're looking for Bill Jordan, he'll be along later on. Stick around and stay with us now as we've still got three quarters of this race yet to go. Competition caution. Who do you think wanted to see this the most? <laughs> Ernie Irving. <laughs> all right, you win. <laughs> right answer. Yeah, Ernie has been awfully strong here today, starting at the, the back of the veil. It was funny, Larry came in this morning, we ought to tell you, at the production meeting, he said, I think Ernie's going to miss the driver's meeting because they got in so late. He said he'll probably just snooze right through it. He said, but heck, he's going to have to start at the back anyway, so, so why not? There's Jack Sprague. In for service from his crew. If you're new to the series, as Dennis Connor goes to work on that truck, if you're new to the series, you don't have to really hustle during this pit stop. You will come back out onto the racetrack in exactly the same position that you came down pit road, unless you happen to go a full lap down. But if you come down the pit lane in second, you take extra time, you go out in ninth, you'll still line up in second place. The great part, look how many people are working on this truck as it sits in the pits here. You don't have to bring 15 and 20 crew members to pit these trucks and when they're in an event like this. You can bring four or five good people here and do all the work, and it really cuts down on expense. It really does, and I think that's one of the great thing about the truck series is it does give these guys a chance to adjust the trucks if they're not quite on track with the setup, and again, cuts down on expenses. You don't have to bring the hot rod tire changers and the jack men and uh, really helps the, the owners of these trucks. So we are under this competition caution. It is the second yellow flag period of the afternoon. We come back with Joe Rutman, the leader at New Hampshire right after this. Green, that is George Miller, father of our producer, Pam Miller. We've shown Tim DeRoyne, our cameraman, driving his modified earlier and Got to show the producer's dad working on Doug George's crew here today. Green is in the air, and Joe Rutman leads him back to turn number one. Most of these teams made some chassis adjustments, although the tire specialists during those cautions seem to be really hanging around the right front of these trucks, Larry. Well, it looked like they checked the air in all 
the, the tires on the truck, but this place is atrocious and known for building right front air pressure, meaning it's normally the truck will push here, so they let some air out of the right front, I'm sure. It looked like that happened on most all of the trucks. Speaking of atrocious, look at the contact there. As they come off turn four, Steve Park got right in the right side of Sprague's truck. They all save it, continue on. Here comes Ernie Irvin out of the outside of Hornaday. That's gonna be a battle. You got Mike Bliss there watching. Which one am I gonna follow? <laughs> is that you personally or the collective you <laughs> that's the battle for the lead Sprague has the inside on Rutman Joe has led since the 18th lap but he'll yield the lead here at lap number 55 so Joe Rutman drops to second Team manager Freddie Fryer is here from Roush Racing with Glenn Jaron. Ernie, you need to get down there and tighten Ernie up just a little bit. Boy, that thing's wagging all around. Right now, he's running for all he's got, and he goes down in the corner. You can watch the 28 truck. It's swishing back and forth. He's a little bit loose, I think. Especially up on the straightaway, yeah. That's fifth spot right there. Bliss and Hornaday. What's Fryer saying to you there, Glenn? Well, well, that's Freddie. Freddie, I saw you take one piece of tape off the truck, the only adjustment you made, but that wasn't chassis related. Joe said that the Roush Ford was real good all the way around the racetrack, but the oil temperature was about 10 degrees hotter than we like to see it, so we pulled a half piece of tape off. Looks like it takes him a few laps for the truck really to start working well. That's correct, it does. It takes two or three laps for the truck to get really hooked up. I think we'll be okay. I'll guarantee you he thinks so because they didn't touch anything but that little piece of tape. 56 laps complete. This is a 200 lap race as opposed to our two earlier races today, which were 125. This is a 200 lapper. Setting it for you, there's Sprague and Rutman. Park is third in that Pennzoil truck. Ernie Irvin fourth. Mike Bliss is fifth. Ron Hornaday, the point leader, is sixth. Butch Miller is seventh in the first Dodge truck. Jimmy Hensley is an eighth. Nathan Butkey ninth. Brian Refner runs in tenth. Harry Gant is eleventh. Dave Rosentes in the QVC truck is twelfth. Joe Bessie is thirteenth. Bobby Gill fourteenth. And Rick Corelli runs fifteenth. Others on the lead lap are Bill Sedgwick and John Nimichek. They are sixteenth and seventeenth respectively. Those seventeen trucks on the lead lap average speed of 104.328 miles an hour. Good scramble there for fourth spot. Bliss and Ernie Irvin. Now before they stopped, Ernie just went right up to Mike Bliss and went right by him. Right now, Mike Bliss looks like he's just as fast as Ernie. I think maybe they might have loosened Ernie's uh, truck up just a little too much. And you know, buddy, you saw that Ernie was a little bit loose a while ago. And, and one thing about the characteristics of this racetrack and the characteristics of this tire, if you ever abuse the tire, sometimes it will not come back and, and perform for you like it should. 59 laps on the board. Back to the stripe. Sprague, Rutman, and Park pulling away by about a second now. On the fourth place truck of Bliss and Ernie Irvin in fifth. You're just joining us, wondering where Mike Skinner is. His day done. Engine problems early for the number two man in points and what had been a 54 point deficit to Hornaday is really going to spread. You know you really have to be very very impressed with the job that Steve Park is doing there in third spot. He's just sitting there he's biding his time. He's getting the most out of the truck at every corner. He's just doing a great job. I'm sure he's turning a lot of heads today. Really is. I'm sure a lot of people may have thought that, uh, you know, qualifying on the outside pole was a fluke, but I think he showed in his first 61 laps that it is not a fluke. You know who else I'm looking forward to seeing? Got word a little while ago that Curtis Markham is going to be driving in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series for the first time at the Martinsville Speedway. Uh, Mike Calabucci, who's the team manager for uh, one of the Chevrolet truck teams, announced that uh, Curtis is going to be on board. Martinsville. Interesting to see how well he does. He knows that racetrack well, that's for sure. There again is the scramble for the lead. Jack Sprague took over at lap 55 from Joe Rutman, who led from laps 18 through 54. Mike Skinner led laps 9 through 17. Steve Park led the first eight laps. 
don't know, Eli, I think we've talked about this before, but uh, one of the owners of Steve Park uh, truck is Kirk Rourke of Rourke Engineering in Michigan. Right. And, and Kirk built a lot of the shock dynos that like our, our own Winston Cup team uses uh, on our transporters at the shop. The dynos are shock. Kirk is a unique, real innovative individual. Very, very talented as the front three pulled away now by a full two seconds on the fourth place truck. Butch Miller with problems there as Refner and Miller got together, but I believe because Butch had slowed, Brian had nowhere to go. The last time through three and four, big flame shot out the exhaust out of the 98 car, so he's definitely off the pace, possibly with some engine problems. We'll watch again and see what happened to uh, Butch Miller's truck with uh, Ruffner in the 44. Oh. Yeah, but Butch slowed up. Brian had no, no chance to react. Jimmy Hensley will sneak through, and so will uh, Butkey there as we take you back live. Butch Miller still running in the Ray Bestus truck, but he has backslid now to the 12th position. Jack Sprague is the leader here in New Hampshire. 35 laps from halfway. Live at New Hampshire International Speedway. Dave Resendiz in the 7 truck. Nathan Butkey in the 75. And Jimmy Hensley in the 30. That's 7th, 8th, and ninth position right now. And Butch Miller's back into the fray there in the Ray Bestus truck. Whatever his problems were earlier, they seem to have uh, cured themselves. Conversely, Mike Bliss, who was running well, has backslid just a bit. You know, I think we're getting a report from uh, Glenn uh, that possibly Butch Miller's ignition system went out. I can relate to this. Just shortly into the race last night, Ernie come off turn two and said, guys, the switch just shut off on this thing. Fortunately, most teams in the truck series and in Winston Cup run dual ignition systems. Ernie, like it appears maybe Butch Miller did, throwed all the switches that swap, swaps it over to the other second system, the backup system, and he's back running, looks like in fine form, just as we did last night. Okay, you're off the hook. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'm saying it, he definitely had a power problem up there because he didn't even accelerate coming out of the corner. And like you say, it's lucky to have two switches in there where you have a choice of a backup system on the electrical part. Far different from the old days when you had to come in and open the hood and have them start doing changes that way. Again, a look at exactly where your favorite truck driver is running right now. Another full field standing update brought to you by the original Pentvisor, the most practical accessory for your truck. There's Park and Bliss. They have now gotten back together again. Bliss has been going from the closer to the front, back a little bit, and now here he comes right back to fourth spot. Whatever Barry Dodson did to the two truck of Mike Bliss, he has really set a fire into it. I mean, it is going around this racetrack. You can see him catching Steve Park right there. He's a good uh, two, three tenths quicker right now than uh, Park. You'll watch him run him down. He's come from a long way back. As a matter of fact, the straightaway is just three or four laps. Barry Dodson, the crew chief for that two truck, 19 NASCAR Winston Cup wins in his career, including six with Rusty Wallace during their great 1989 championship year. And Barry Dodson has been sought out and found by Glenn Jarrett. He was just talking to his driver, Mike Bliss. Barry, looks like the truck's a lot better. Did you adjust it at that uh, yellow flag? Yeah. We made three pretty big adjustments there. Air pressure, rear spoiler, and wedge, and we got to do a little bit more. So you're going to have a pretty busy halftime, huh? Yeah, busy five minutes. <laughs> well, they've cut that down from 10 to 5, so uh, they're going to have to work fast. The truck looks good now. You know, one thing we, we oftentimes don't figure in, Larry McReynolds, is, you know, fuel burn. Uh, you guys figure it in, but, you know, time to make a fuel stop. But 22 gallons of fuel I mean, that's a lot of weight to have to deal with as you see the point leader Ron Hornaday now back in six spot you're, you're burning off how many pounds there and if you burn the full 22 gallons which most of these fuel cells hold you're you're burning off about 150 pounds and what that does that vastly increases the weight on the front wheels or what we call the front percentage now the more front percentage that a truck has or any racing vehicle has the more the front end will push the, the front end will not bite and that's what Barry's talking about the longer they run the more fuel they burn off the tighter the truck gets. Meanwhile, Ron Hornaday with his closest 
pursuer already out of the race today, that being Mike Skinner. Matt, it looks as though they've kind of told him, I don't know if it's cruise control, but just be careful and take your time, huh? But you know, we've seen this a lot this year with, uh, or over the last two years with Ron Horner Day, just when you think he's in cruise control and that scoreboard shows about 25 to go, he shows back up on the scene. Doug Williams is the man calling the shots for that Napa truck, Matt. Eli, I talked to Ron Horner Day before the race. He said their game plan was to go with a softer setup to give them better tires later in the run. But they made some adjustments during the brief yellow. They're still beginning to backslide. Crew Chief Doug George for Horner Day. What's he saying about the truck? Right now, the Napa United brake truck is just a little bit tight. So we're going to come in and make some adjustments. Back up front, there's Rutman in the 80, chasing down Jack Sprague. If you're just joining us, Jack took the lead in lap number 55 after Rutman led from the 18th through the 54th lap. We're now at lap 76 of 200. Remember, there's a halftime break of five minutes when tire changes will take place, another routine pit work. You know, you're seeing one thing right now. A lot of the trucks are beginning to push as Rutman takes the lead down the back straightaway. Around Bobby Gerhardt, they just make them the meat and the sandwich, if you will. Let's see if Rutman can hang on to the inside. Well, Rutman's yes, there. Sir. You see him closing in right on by. His truck was just like a rocket ship around the bottom of that corner. So in lap number 78, Joe Rutman reassumes the lead, and there's old Ernie Irvin in the 28 chasing down Bliss again. That's the fourth place battle. Well, what I think's happening now, the tires are really coming back in, and the trucks that were really loose a little while ago, the racetrack's coming to them. The tires are beginning to push a little bit, and I think Ernie's getting a better setup right now than he had when they started back on fresh or cooler tires a while ago. You know, that's the way our Winston Cup car acted in July. And again, I keep saying that he, his truck is set up a lot like that car. We was better on long green runs. We was not good on the short sprint runs. And that may be what he experienced a while ago, like when Mike Bliss got by. Around Bobby Gerhardt they go. Same guy that the other fellows, Ruffin and Sprague, split a short while ago. Around Rich Bickle in the Richard Petty-owned Dodge truck. Rich is now a couple laps down, back in 20th position. 79 laps on the board. Of course, later on this year, you'll be seeing the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series again here on TNN. We'll be with you in Bakersfield, California. Good Mason name. Marine Race Good Park. name. Bakersfield. Bakersfield. Yes, yeah. sir. You're going to lay claim to that, are you? <laughs> I'll hang tight. <laughs> Up front, no change. Although Sprague would like to reassume the top spot, we are at 80 laps of 200. We're back in a moment. It's complete. We are not under caution, but we certainly could have been. A problem with the Bell South Mobility truck of John Nemechek. There you see John coming off four sideways, got loose evidently off turn four and slid down, got it spun around, but went up and just barely tagged the inside wall. Caution did not come out. The secret would have been the leaders was over in three and four. Did their spotters say spin on the front straightaway or did they wait and see what happened right there? That's a big secret sometime with the spotters. 86 laps on the board right now. As you see, Nemechek having continued away. He is 14 laps from halfway and getting fresh tires. Meanwhile, Joe Rutman is the race leader. Jack Sprague in second. Ernie Irvin now up to third. Mike Bliss is fourth. Brian Refner is fifth. Ron Hornaday is sixth. Dave Resendiz is seventh. Butch Miller is eighth. Steve Park is ninth. Joe Bessie in tenth. Nathan Butkey is eleventh. Harry Gant now running twelfth. Bobby Gill is thirteenth. Bill Sedgwick is 14th, Jimmy Hensley is 15th, and others on the lead lap are Doug George and Rick Corelli. Now let's pick up the Hornaday and Resendiz scramble now. Hornaday in the 16, Resendiz in the 7. That's 7th and 8th place. Resendiz, winner at Nashville just eight days ago. His truck's really working good right on the bottom. What we got to remember, he won the uh, opening event of this season down at Homestead, and there's a lot of similarities between this racetrack and good Homestead, point. Florida. Good point. 
There's a bunch of good trucks out there right now just waiting for the time that they can go in there and work on it and make some adjustments. I think it's some mill handling traffic out there right now, but you wait till they make these adjustments. You'll see people come to the front that are not up there right now. You know, buddy, with right at 10 laps to go before the halfway, what these crew chiefs has got to do, they got to start picking these drivers' brains. What's that truck exactly doing? They got to have a good game plan to make those changes. Uh, I know five minutes can seem like a long time when you're trying to make a lot of changes. It goes by in a hurry. I, I know there's a lot of races. I wish we had five minutes in the middle to work on our car. Well, they'll have that five minute break here coming up in about 11 laps. If you're just joining us, the number two man in points, Mike Skinner, already in the garage, done for the day. The same with Mike Hurlbert, Kenny Allen, Jeff Spreaker, all having parked their trucks. They are done for the afternoon. The lead was held by Steve Park, then Skinner, then Rutman, then Sprague, and now Joe Rutman again. There you see Butch Miller battling with Resendiz. Give Butch Miller eighth and Resendiz going back to ninth. There's the differential from first to second to third. Rutman on the left of your screen. Jack Sprague in the middle and that yellow truck, the Pennzoil colors for Park. So basically a thousand feet from first to third equidistant among all three trucks. And again, these guys have got nine laps so they get these fresh tires. They know there's no sense in pressing the envelope too hard because if they take the lead or right on the guy's bumper, it's gonna be washed away here in a few laps when this caution comes in. We saw Rick Corelli just going a lap down. Haven't heard much on the High Plains Drifter today, the winner at Bristol earlier this season, but he just goes a lap down. He's a 17th place truck. You know, one incentive, though, that I am overlooking that the lead lap 100 is that Gatorade right. halfway money. So there certainly is an incentive to lead uh, lap 100. $1,000 for the Gatorade halfway challenge. That goes to the first truck across the line at lap 100. Larry, I was watching the 80 truck go in the corner. He's actually putting the left side down on the flat part of the racetrack to make a little bit of an adjustment getting in the corner that the truck is not exactly perfect, but he's dropping under the yellow line, getting into the corner to make it turn a little bit better. That's exactly right. You know, a lot of times if a truck's not turning, you get it down on that flat part of the racetrack, that'll make the truck go ahead and make the truck turn. Rich Bickle goes the race leader. Rock Menace feed. Check in with Glenn Jowett on pit road. Well, guys, we're down at Mike Bliss's pit, and he wants a set of tires real bad, but well, we, got a, oh, we got a big crash up in turn one. That's right. Problems in the corner. Harry Gant's truck is up against the wall. Bob Rizzo, or Rob Rizzo, that's he on the right of your screen, the Trans Am racer who spun three times at Watkins Glen in his truck a few weeks ago and still came up to finish sixth. And there you see the 15 of Bobby Gill also involved. Caution at lap number 94. Doug George, he backed straight across there. I mean, he was very lucky. Look at the contact down the front straightaway from Nathan Bucky on uh, Gerhardt as they start down in turn one. Looked like everybody got it straight. Whoa, oh. hey. <laughs> Hang on, Harry. <laughs> Sedgwick got through there and relatively unscathed. Harry took a pretty good ride. He yes, did. He, he was up in the air there. The right side of the truck was all the way up. There you see the uh, problems that Rob Rizzo has from North Providence, Rhode Island, who, as we said, is a Trans Am racer trying to go roundy round racing. We're back in a moment to New Hampshire. Board and those of you north of the border as well, great to have you tuned in. We are in New Hampshire for a busy, busy triple header. Earlier today, Ted Christopher, his first win on the NASCAR Bush North Series. The modified tour, Tony Hirschman got the win. And right now we're battling on the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. A little more debris to be picked up in the corner as cleanup continues after that multi-truck spin. Also, as they pulled some of the trucks away, a good bit of debris and fluid put down on the racetrack, hence the lengthy cleanup here. 97 laps on the board of 200. Seen some interesting stories here today. The most interesting is the fact that the number two man in points, Mike Skinner, is already done for the garage. Finished 27th position right now. Of course, we've also seen 
entire stories today in all the different divisions. Heck, even Mike Bliss had to make a pit stop for a tire here in the Truck Series race. Yeah, I guess on the competition yellow, he had a right front tire that had actually started to blister. The temperature had got real hot on it. It had blistered just like you'd see almost a blister on your skin. And a lot of times that can come, especially on a new surface like this. But also if the truck is pushing, that's putting a lot of load on that right front tire, generating a lot of heat. And it just, the heat will over exceed what it'll take and it'll actually blister. And Glenn, it really takes papal dispensation to be able to change tires on this series when you're not allowed to. Does that mean you got to get okay from the Pope? That's close <laughs> enough. Okay, yeah. Exactly. Well, you heard Barry say a lot of changes they made. They're hoping that things will improve. But this is Bliss's pit. And he's been hauling for new tires. He can't wait for this halftime break. But look. They got a flat set of, why would they want to put a flat set of tires on a new racetrack? Now, what this is, he spun in practice and a flat spotted a set, but they've got them out here just in case. They only have so many tires with them, but on a more serious note, Larry, he did indeed blister the right front tire. I'll try to pull this up and get you a little shot of it. Okay, you can see this is the right front tire that came off. And we saw this earlier on the McCrary tire, so I think they're still having a little bit of problem on this racetrack since that new paving job. Not that it's anything they can't fix, but this is the tire that they used last uh, uh, summer, like Larry said, with the Winston Cup cars. They've done some work to the pavement since then, so it caused a little bit of trouble, but maybe most of this was just due to Bliss's truck pushing just a little bit. As Barry said, they're going to be busy beavers at halftime trying to fix that thing, make it stop pushing. So that's the update from the pit lane. We are coming up on the halftime break, which will only be five minutes in duration here today. As you see them going through the season's worth of uh, duct tape on the Bobby Gill truck. Bobby began the year in the Spears manufacturing truck that Nathan Butkey is now running. It took him out of the battle at that time for the Sintas Rookie of the Year honors, but now he's back in the truck in a different truck obviously and back in the hunt for the rookie of the year campaign. He needs a trip to Marietta Georgia in the wind tunnel with that one. He's know, lost a it. lot of the aerodynamics uh, Bobby Gill has on the 15 truck. Those guys has done a good job though. They just keep coming in and uh, patching on it some more and beating the pace car back out and get back on the tail end getting caught up come in work on it a little bit more and of course they'll have five minutes here shorter to work on. Now we should mention that the next time by as you see the Westview Capital truck for uh, Harry Gann next time by will be halfway but they don't give out the Gatorade bonus money under caution so we'll wait a bit later through five green flag laps before those dollars are given away but let's go back and again show you what happened to Harry Gant and all the other guys in the corner buddy. Well you see the 33 there watch him as, as he gets up there watch how hard this thing comes down on that left front corner that's got to be a tough truck Bobby Gill and the 15 there slides there was contact between the 33 truck and the 15 truck of Bobby Gill as they started in the corner. Doug George also went slip sliding out of the screen there and there you see all Harry Gant. But as you were saying earlier, he really enjoys this series. He does. It's a lot of fun to get back out here and do some racing. 11 races for next year, mm. too. So he, he said he wasn't anywhere close to retiring yet. Field now coming out of the corner. He'll be heading to the stripe. And they'll get the crossed flags from Chris Morgan. So halfway home. And all three of these events today now going to be official. Playing uh, the cat and mouse game with Mother Nature. It's looked like it wanted to rain all day. And after this morning, I guess the rain stopped about 10 or so, 1030, somewhere in that vicinity. And ever since, it's not rained a drop. Eli, the track's dry, but it looks like it's raining oh, out it there. Just off the racetrack, I mean, it looks like it's raining. You can barely see the tops of the mountains around here. It's very hazy. Been foggy, but nevertheless, this triple header is going in the books, and that's the best news of all for these fans. A hearty bunch who have uh, come out to spend the afternoon with us here at New Hampshire International Speedway. Now the red flag coming out. The field is going to be coming down the pit lane. They've also got a lot of speedy dry out in the turn. Turn one and two in particular where this accident took place. There is a lot of speedy dry down there. They're going to bring out the power sweeper and help blow away some of the extra speedy drive. So here comes the field now under the red. 
down the pit lane. They'll have to all put on four sticker tires. They do have to be sticker tires. They can't be tires that's been scuffed in practice. And again, they can make uh, most any adjustment on the truck that they want. I do think that they cannot touch the front jack bolts or change the front springs because that would certainly adjust the heights of the truck. But uh, you'll see them taking tire temperatures and getting air pressure built up. And that'll give them feedback along with what the driver tells them about what the truck's exactly doing and what it might need for this last 100 laps going to the finish. Hood is up on the Ernie Urban truck. The crew going to work there. Ernie now being shown in the fourth position. Joe Rutman in the 80. He is the race leader. Right now, don't see any adjustments being made on that truck other than uh, putting the tires on, four fresh tires and some gasoline. Looked like the guy was cleaning the grill. You heard they was running a little bit hot oil temperature a while ago. There goes the gasoline in. Looks like there's a panhandler just alongside Joe Rutman's truck, or, or is that Glenn Jarrett? That's Glenn Jarrett down there. <laughs> <laughs> That's me, guys, and we're going to talk to Joe Rutman. I know he's been wanting to talk like this for a long time this year. Been kind of a lean year for you, buddy, but boy, what an awesome truck you got today. Well, there's no question about it. I'd like to thank all the guys at Roush Racing and Roush and Roush Roush Industries, but I just don't quite know them all. I, you know, 1500, 1300. I, guys, thanks a million for giving me this opportunity. And and these guys build an awesome truck. Uh, Rich and Goss, the crew chief, and uh, and Freddie Fryer, the team manager. We've been working real hard to get to this point, and I, I knew we should we we should have been here a long time ago, but. Uh, I get the faith wasn't on our side, but uh, everybody at Roush is awesome, and they, you guys in Michigan are awesome. Looks like you got to be a little patient. The truck really comes in about midway through a run, Joe. Well, that's what's uh, you know what we've been working on all year long is to get a truck that would uh, that would uh, stay underneath us after a long run, and I it, and uh, they've been really working hard trying to develop that for us, and apparently they're getting closer and closer. Uh, I don't want them to say they're satisfied right now because I even want it better, you know, so it's good, but we want it better, guys. A typical race car driver, Freddie Fryer said, we ain't changing nothing. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Here's Matt. <laughs> well, I'm standing by with Ron Horner today. They're going to make some few chassis adjustments, add a rubber to the left front. Ron, you're sixth place. How are you doing so far? Well, we don't really need to make chassis adjustments, but uh, I was stupid. I ended up taking some gear out of this thing. I thought the track was going to get slippery and I was going to burn the rear tires off, so took gear out of it really hurt this uh, Napa Chevrolet so we're gonna have to make changes to loosen it up just to run with them but uh, it's really abusing the brakes and everything trying to get in the corner your uh, title rival Mike Skinner had trouble he's falling out now do you go into title contention mode or do you run for the win well right now we don't have the truck to win uh, first time I could say that all year but uh, we're just gonna have to ride it out if those guys get up tangling like they've been doing it's right now that's going for the money and uh, we might be having a chance. We get a couple yellow flags. This truck's pretty awesome on restarts. Gordy did a transmission, and Dennis Fisher's got an awesome motor. I just took the wrong uh, uh, rear end gear. You know, we're running so much RPM yesterday with new tires. These tires got wore out. I want to turn about 8,000. I need to turn about 9,000. Well, they had hoped to bring the truck that they raced to Richmond, but contact and damage with the Jack Sprague truck that had to pull out a backup for Loudon. But nevertheless, they've got a poll, three wins, 17 top tens in 17 races. That, folks, means that that truck has been around for every single lap of every single race this year. Today's exclusive TNN coverage of the Pennzoil VIP Discount Auto Center's triple header is brought to you by the more than 1,400 is here in New Hampshire. What do they call those lights there outside the garage, you know, Larry? Eli, you're from Alabama. They call them dust, dust to, to dawn, dawn lights. lights. They yeah. sure do. Those are the lights that come on when it gets dark out. And that's how it is right now. It's getting fairly dark. And that's Dave Resendiz, driver of the QVC truck, working on his own machine. He is in ninth spot, making some significant changes, obviously, on that QVC truck as I guess everybody else is just making a quick look. Everybody else has already left the pit lane. Let's give you the full field rundown here at the halfway point. Joe Rutman, Sprague, Steve Park still hanging right in there in third spot in Kurt Rorick's truck. Irvin, Bliss, Refner, Hornaday, Miller, Resendiz in ninth, and Joe Bessie. Jimmy Hensley checking in in 12th in the Dodge. Nimichek, Gant, Gerhardt, Bobby Gill, and Rich Bickle. And further on back, you see now a number of the teams that are already either many, many laps down or in the garage area, including Mike Skinner. He is in 27th position, done for 
the day. It's been a long day. Glad you've been with us, man. If you're a racing fan, you have had a <laughs> smorgasbord and a half here at New Hampshire today. From the Bush North Series to the Modifieds to the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. But it is getting dark and the ceiling really getting lower now. And it's going to be a race on the track and a race against the elements. Let's take a look at some of the halftime numbers for you. The mid-race report brought to you by Duraliner, by Duraliner Bedliners. Duraliner beating the leader is tough in the halftime mid-race report. There you see the lead changes between Steve Park, Skinner, Rutman, and Sprague. And the trucks that are in the garage, Jeff Spraker, Kenny Allen, Mike Hurlbert, and Mike Skinner. Well, who's got the upper hand? What do you think, guys? Of course, you don't know what kind of changes we've seen here at halftime. One thing we have right now, we have a tremendous amount of trucks that are a lap down. There's only 13 trucks in the lead lap, so mm -hmm. when this thing starts back, there's going to be a lot of people trying to get back in the lead lap that are on the inside groove here, and they're going to one thing you can't do, you can't jump the lead man when he comes towards the green flag, so it's going to be tough to make up a lap right at it. We're getting set to go here, and Resendiz remains on pit road, so the QVC truck in the ninth spot will be giving up the position here as Resendiz cannot answer the bell to start the second half of the event. Green flag is in the air, remember? The halfway money has not yet been given out because we were under caution at the break. So five green flag laps from now is when the bonus money will be given away. Rutman and Sprague. Here goes Jack. Sprague. Jack says, I want it. Down into turn three, you can see Rutman trying to get back on the bottom. Look at Ernie Irvin coming near in the 28 truck. Steve Parks in the yellow. Chevrolet coming off there, the Pennzoil Chevrolet as he comes off turn four. The spread still in the lead. Looked like Ernie might have found out just how deep you could drive these trucks getting into the lead. Right right <laughs> <laughs> Jot that one down for future reference. Let's go to Glenn Jarrett. Well, guys, Steve Park, uh, along with Joe Rutman, didn't change anything but uh, four tires and got fuel. Park did have a little bit of a blister on the right front. It was it was in the center of the tire, so they think it was just air pressure, so they've adjusted that. It wasn't too bad of a blister. Now, we're in Dave Resendez's pit. The reason he couldn't answer the bell, Eli, a broken valve spring on the right side of the engine. Former driver Ernie Cook, who now works for that team, up under the hood there, working furiously, trying to get Resendez back out there in the bottom. And how about that scramble? Fourth, fifth, and sixth with three wide across the racetrack there for a moment. Ernie had just about slid back almost to seventh by those three guys. Again, it just seems like it takes two or three laps for Ernie's truck to get going, and now he's back and forth uh, trying to run down those leaders. See Ron Hornaday there in the 16 truck just behind still washing the 28. Out a bit. There, Vernie Irvin is still washing out a little bit, but he is driving very hard into the corner, and I think he might be creating a little of his own problem by trying too hard getting in the corner. I think we've talked about this before. There's one thing you'll never be able to accuse Ernie about, and that's not driving in deep enough. Same thing with Ron Hornaday right there. But he'll lose the spot to Refner this time by. So swap fifth and sixth around, Refner to fifth, and Hornaday back to sixth. Hornaday can really feast today again because Skinner, the number two man in points, is already done for the day. Engine problems, he'll finish no better than 27th, 28th position. Next time by, it'll be the $1,000 Gatorade Front Runner Award for the leader after the fifth green flag lap of racing. Would you tell him, go on up there and get that money? I don't think he's going to get it from this distance. <laughs> tell him, you've got to make those tires go 95 more laps. Here comes Sprague, the leader, as you watch middle of the field. Sprague gets the halftime break money, if you will. The Gatorade Front Runner Award, Rutman in second. Steve Park in third. One thing is for sure, those three have not gone now because from third back to fourth spot, Ernie Urban, one and eight tenth seconds. And they got away in a hurry. In five short laps, they have put some distance on the fourth place truck and on back. You know who I'm impressed with is Nathan Butkey, the number 75 driver. 
Young man took over earlier in the season after Bobby Gill was let go by the Spears manufacturing team. And Butkey has had a series of successes in this truck after a Bush Series visit every now and then over the last few years. Good, talented young man from Randleman, North Carolina. He seems like he's showing up more and more each week up near the front of the pack. We're still watching fourth, fifth, and sixth. Meanwhile, closer to the front, that's the battle for the lead. Spray, Rutman, and Park. The crew chief on the lead truck is Dennis Connor. Of course, had a lot of success in big track races over the years in Winston Cup, Bush, and now the truck series. Let's hear from him, Matt. Well, guys, they picked up the halfway money. What they really want is the big Sunday money. They fought a tight condition most of the first half. Dennis, obviously the changes you made were the right way. Well, I don't know. Jack hasn't said anything, and uh, you're right. We're looking for the uh, victory with the Boyka State Chevrolet. It's been too long, but uh, we, we did some changes that have worked in the past. Kind of minor. Didn't want to go too far, and uh, probably it helped because Jack hasn't said anything. And uh, we'll just wait till the three-quarter mark and do some more if we have to. They messed around a little bit with air pressure and also changed the left front shock. This is the same truck that he won in Milwaukee. Meanwhile, those three trucks have pulled away by two and one-tenth seconds now on fourth place on back. And again, when Dennis Conner was saying the three-quarter mark, remember, there is a competition caution flag that will fly somewhere between lap 145 and 155. So that's part of the strategy that will inject into the remainder of this afternoon's event. We're at lap 109 of 200. And indeed, life does begin when you get to the track. Welcome back to New Hampshire International Speedway. No change among the front three. Jack Sprague, Joe Rutman, Steve Park. You know, we've just been sitting here watching Park. Talented young driver. He's just driving the wheels off of that truck today, buddy. He's doing a great job. He's making a late apex turn into the corner and doing a great job of keeping that truck where it does not push out the center part of the corner. But I'm watching Joe Rutman at the moment. I think he's just fixing to show his dominance again. He's moving in on Sprague. He seems to have a lower line through the corner. Everything's working well. I think in another five, six, seven laps, I think he's going to give Jack Sprague another call. It's like watching these three trucks. You know, they're, some of them's got an advantage one place. Maybe one has one another. The bottom line for the last uh, 20 laps, almost 17 laps, they've just been even, look like they've been evenly matched. That's eighth place on your screen now. Butch Miller and Nathan Butkey. Eighth and ninth spot being battled for there. We're at lap 118 of 200. Talking about Nathan Buckey, he is from Randleman, North Carolina. He'd have to be able to drive something being from there, wouldn't you think, Larry? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Growing up at the face of the throne, if you will. Yeah. The home it. of the king, Richard Petty. If you're curious about Dave Resendiz, he is back on the racetrack, 14 laps down now after the engine problems that uh, we heard Glenn tell us about. And he's back 14 laps down to put Resendiz in 26th spot. But he's working on Butch Miller. Just remember, regardless of what happens here, somewhere around lap 145 to 155, we'll have, have that final competition yellow where, again, they cannot change tires, but they can adjust the trucks for the final time. Unscheduled pit stop for Bob Keselowski coming down the pit lane, and he comes down too quickly. He will be penalized an additional 15 seconds. There's Park gathering himself back in after a rocky turn seconds ago. We'll take a look what happened here and show you how it is at this area among the front three opened up just a bit. Sprague and Ruckman. There. Good catch there. He had the back of that truck, the AC truck there. Steve Parks had completely hung out coming off turn four. He really hadn't recovered from it either. Looks like he may be losing just a little bit of ground in those front two. The interval, remember earlier, from third back to fourth was two and a tenth. 
We'll get the interval for you now as we grab our stopwatches from third place Steve Park. All the way back to Ernie Irvin now is four and a quarter seconds and that's from Park who himself is about three quarters of a second behind those two right there. So interval among the top five widening just a bit except for this great battle for the lead. There's first second and third. And here goes Bliss inside of Refner. That'll be fifth place for Mike Bliss as Refner drops back to sixth. This guy's been battling for the last few laps. Look like Refner just didn't quite getting off the corner, maybe like Bliss, and Bliss finally slipped under and coming off turn two. Corner day is seventh, Miller is eighth, Bucky is ninth, Joe Bessie is tenth, Jimmy Hensley eleventh, Bill Sedgwick is twelfth, John Nimichek is thirteenth, fourteenth is Rick Corelli, Doug George is fifteenth, Harry Gant sixteenth, Bobby Gill is seventeenth, Bobby Gerhardt is eighteenth, Rich Mickle is nineteenth, and Kenny Bouchard is twentieth. Walker Evans is 21st, Bob Brevac 22nd, Bob Keselowski is 23rd, Rob Rizzo is 24th, Lance Norick 25th, Dave Resendiz is 26th, and the final four are in the garage, Jeff Spraker, Kenny Allen, Mike Hurlburt, and Mike Skinner. Last lap, 121.408 miles an hour. That was the lap for the leader last time by. Look at Joe Rutman. He's putting a lot of pressure on the tailgate there as they come off turn four. Joe really gets a good drive up out of the corner. And now you can see the distinctive difference in the two through the corner. There's about a half a truck length difference of where Joe Rutman can run right in the center part of the corner. But he's not closed too much on Sprague. Sprague is, these trucks are very, very equal. Again from third place now back to fourth place Ernie Irvin will get the separation. It's up to five and a quarter seconds now. So Ernie losing a full second in relation to the third place man Steve Park over the last what six seven laps since last we timed him. There's the interval there goes Park in that yellow Pennzoil truck We're waiting for Ernie. There he is. That's five and a quarter seconds back to fourth place and Mike Bliss is in fifth. Meanwhile Steve Park he has now dropped about a second behind Joe Rutman Glenn. Yes yes he has and I was talking to the oh, owner. Oh, trouble. Brian Refner. He got some problems on the racetrack now coming off of turn four. Hornaday was in the middle of that as well. Caution is on the speedway. Could have been a whole lot worse. Could have been a whole lot worse at lap number 128. Brian Ruffner and Ron Hornaday got together coming off the corner. And we're under yellow. Caution out for the fourth time here this afternoon for the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. Let's take another look and see if you can pick up exactly what happened, buddy. Okay, you see Hornaday there. Refner gets loose coming off the corner. Hornaday's got absolutely nowhere to go. Everybody did a great job of getting on the brakes. There's a little bit of contact right there, but that's minimal when you spend coming off turn four here. Butch Miller sneaking through in that Ray Bestus truck, and we're under caution. Lap number 128 of 200 up on the board. Jack Sprague is the man of the hour. Today's exclusive TNN coverage of the Pennzoil VIP Discount Auto Center's triple header is brought to you by Chevrolet. One car company has won more races in the history of NASCAR, genuine Chevrolet. Welcome back, everybody. Lap 131 up on the board as we have gone back to green. And the battle for the lead is a good one. Joe Ruckman trying to make the inside move against Jack Sprague, who has led since lap 101. Couldn't do it that time. Meanwhile, Glenn, before that caution, we were talking, or at least you were about to begin speaking about Steve Park, who had dropped back just a bit. Yeah, Eli, I was talking to Kurt Roaring, the truck owner, and Kurt looks like the truck is uh, coming to you just a little bit, but you've had a few problems today. Yeah, we've had a few. I mean, actually, Steve jumped in at a moment's notice for us this week when Mike McLaughlin couldn't make it, and he's given the Pennzoil Precision Gear truck a real good run. 
It uh, was a little loose off the get-go in the second half, but uh, it's coming to him now. He's going to give it all he's got. Pretty good shoe out there, isn't he? I tell you what, he's a very impressive young man. I mean, he's got the likes of Ernie Irvin parked on his rear bumper right now. He just handles it with all the calm of a, a veteran. Well, we're going to watch him for a while. He is definitely fun to watch. Let's see how calm he stays right now <laughs> as Park in third has Ernie waiting to get by in the 1-800-collect truck. All of those trucks are tied together or battling for position, including Mike Bliss there in the number two. He is in fifth, as you see. Now, Ernie's truck seems to be running pretty well right now, Larry. I was watching him in the center part of the corner. He seems to have gotten rid of some of the problems he had when they first come out from the uh, halftime. He seems to be just as fast as anybody right at the moment. His truck's definitely working a little better right now. There you see him able to pull it back down to the bottom coming off turn two. The tire's got 33 laps on him, and it seems like maybe this is when his truck really starts working. Let's not leave Nathan Bucky out of that. He's also battling for position. Here goes Bliss now for fourth. Couldn't do it. Almost lost a spot. Boy, to both of them lost a little bit of time to the lead trucks there. They go in in the corner there and almost made contact. Ernie had to swerve to the high side. Mike Bliss had to kind of counteract there. You can see Nathan Bucky going by Mike Bliss as they go down in the corner. Oh, and here comes Butch Miller. Tough break for Butch. He had backslid to 12th, the lap down, and is now heading to the pit lane for an unscheduled stop as we're back up front. You know, same thing happened earlier. Those guys started uh, battling amongst themselves, and the front three pulled away by, at that point, about five seconds. And uh, at least for the moment now, it seems they're going to try and ride and catch up again. Glenn, what's the thought from the uh, Roush pit area? they they got to be pleased with Rutman's ride. Oh, absolutely, Eli, but I'm just like Buddy Baker. I thought right now, right about now, he would start to move back toward the front. But Joe has called in and told him that this set of tires that they put on at halftime just a little bit too tight for him. So when they come in at the uh, competition yellow between lap 145, 155, they're going to take about a half a round of bite out of the truck. Just a little tight right now. Not that far away from that point either. We're at lap 137 right now. say that Mike Bliss wanted to go by Nathan Bucky pretty bad there. He leaned right into him. You see uh, Bucky go a little high and Mike Bliss went right on by. He scooted by. Ernie pulls away a bit more. There's your full field standing update being brought to you by the original vent visor. The most practical accessory for your truck. Lap 138 of 200. Earlier today, Ted Christopher winning in the NASCAR Bush North Series here. Tony Hirschman winning in the NASCAR Featherweight Modified Tour. Congratulations again to Kenny Wallace winning the NASCAR Bush Series race in Richmond, Virginia today. And this NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series event yet to be determined. Sprague, Rutman, and Steve Park are battling for the win. Lap 138. No one challenging for the lead right now. Behind Rutman, you've got Park, then Urban, Bliss, Butke, those top six relatively close together. Brian Ruffner is seventh, Ron Hornaday is eighth, Joe Bassi is ninth, tenth is Bill Sedgwick, and eleventh, Jimmy Hensley. Today's exclusive TN. We continue live at New Hampshire International Speedway, lap 144. We are one lap away from the beginning of the window for the competition cautions that uh, we'll be seeing here. Somewhere between lap 145 and 155 as the leader is still Jack Sprague. Joe Rutman in second as they go around Bob Brevac. A little while ago, Butch Miller was running well, then he went a lap down, and we told you he was coming down the pit lane. Matt Yoakum, give us the update, would you? Well, we're behind his pit. They've got the truck up on Jackson. There's that smell of rear end grease. Butch, what's wrong with the truck? Well, we brought the rear end. Normally, we run precision gears, and uh, they do a great job building their rear ends. Well, fortunately, we didn't bring the right rear end with us and uh, the right rear end gear ratio. So we borrowed a gear ratio from a competitor, and I don't know who built it, but it wasn't any good. Are you going to try to get back out for points? 
Pardon? Are you going to try to get back out for points? Absolutely. We're, we're getting towards the end of the year. We've got to get as many points as we can. Let's go back upstairs. We heard Kurt Rorick was telling uh, Glenn earlier that maybe they had made the wrong selection of gear for Steve Park's truck. It's been kind of a, a universal lament. Oh, problems in turn number one. Jimmy Hensley, or correct myself, that's Lance Norick, who will spin his truck. Rob Rizzo spins as well, and we are under caution. Lance Norick, and for the second time today, Rob Rizzo, lap 147. Spin and turns one and two. There you see the Rizzo machine. You know, we're talking about Butch Miller coming back to run for points. Uh, he is sixth in the points, but selecting a rear end gear, we've, we've heard up and down the pit lane uh, this weekend. And, hey, a lot of weekends. We might have made the wrong selection. And Eli, I could see where that could happen here. You know, it, this is still supposed to be part of the summer, and it's supposed to be hot, and the track's supposed to be greasy, but with the overcast clouds, the track stayed cool, kept a lot of grip in it. I'm sure a lot of teams elected to go with a little bit higher gear, expected the track to get slick, couldn't hook the rear tires up track hasn't gotten slick so a lot of them's probably got too high gear in it. What happens when you borrow something from another team like that? Uh, and Butch didn't make it clear if they actually bought the rear end gear from the other team where they just borrowed it and said here use it. What happens if you if you ruin it if it burns up or if you wreck somebody's uh, pieces uh, you, you're on the hook for that or is there a gentleman's agreement otherwise how does that work. I think in most cases you know if you borrow something and, and you use it during the race and you don't have a problem with it you pay to have it serviced back to the condition it was when you borrowed it. If you borrow it and it tore up whether it's your fault or the team you borrowed it from's fault you, you replace it, it. Yeah. you replace it. Interesting. There's Lance Norick's truck. He and Rizzo spun up in the corner. You can see Lance Norick was in a lot of trouble. He got into Rizzo as he was trying to go by on the low side, but Lance was in trouble way before he got to the corner there, all the way sideways, going down into turn one. Rizzo just didn't have anywhere to go. Now here comes the field. They'll be heading down the pit lane. They are going to take the competition caution at lap number 148, just tacking it on to this fifth yellow period of the day with Norick and Rizzo having spun up in the corner. So this is going to be the competition yellow. Chance to give your truck the once over. Give it a fill up of Unical racing fuel. This is pretty much it, Eli. This is the last adjustment you get to make. What you got here, that takes you to the end. You can see a lot of them adjusting the air pressure on the tires right now. Even the uh, air tank is out there for Ernie Irvin as he sits in the pits. Everybody's making those final, just tweaking it. That's a little more than a tweak there. Yeah, there's a little bit more. Matt Yoakum's on the scene. Jack, Jack Sprague just pulled away. He got half a turn. One pit up is Ron Hornaday Jr. They're letting some air pressure out, and they took some wedge out because his truck is still pushing. Let's go a little further up here road in Glen Cherry. Well, I talked to Freddie Fair. In fact, I stood here and watched them adjust right this truck. They went to the left rear, took one half round of bite out of it. We're going to walk back here to uh, the two truck of Mike Bliss. He's got serious problems. I think he's still blistering tires. Uh, they're working on the right front again. NASCAR has once again, I think, allowed them to change the right front tire because it's blistered. They just haven't been able to seem to hit the right setup on that truck. But Rutman told Freddie Fryer when he pulled out, I think that's it. I'll be ready to get them now. Well, we'll find out from Joe Rutman, who led earlier in the day, but it's been Sprague, that man, in the 24 truck, who has led since lap 101. Ernie Irvin back in action here today after winning in Richmond, Virginia last night. There is Ernie in the number 28 truck running in the fourth spot, but now we're down to the nitty-gritty. 151 of 200 laps on the board. Watch the story. Sprague is the leader. Then you've got Doug George as the buffer truck between first and second place Joe Rutman. Rutman is in the 80. Mike Bliss had made a run on Ernie and uh, then got trapped behind the truck of John Nemechek. Now he's still trapped behind the truck of John Nemechek as uh, Brian Refner and uh, several other of them moved by. Little scramble, oh, problems middle of the field. That's Nemechek going around. No caution, no caution. Second time John Nemechek has spun today. Did you see how close the 16 truck of Ron Hornaday come to getting into that wreck? He was very lucky to have a lot of racetrack on the right side to go by. 
Doug George at 21. He is a lap down right now. And there goes Rutman trying to get around the lap traffic and bring Steve Park and Ernie with him. Let's take another look at what happened to John Nimichek. Going down in the corner. Got below that yellow line. Truck looked like it maybe broke loose, and he actually touched the left rear of Brian Refter. Tried to correct it, spun it around, and everybody just kind of <laughs> the red butters it. The reaction of Butkey and Hornaday to get around, too. That's what makes these athletes so good. A top from having the, the guts to get out there at 140, 150, 200 miles an hour. The hand-eye coordination that react that quickly. That's what separates them from the, from the rest of the lot. Look at this, though. Everybody has caught up with Sprague now. It looked like Joe Rutman has really got his game together right now. Steve Park is running so well going down the back straightaway into turn three. Great scramble for the lead. By the way, those of you tuning in hoping to see Buckmasters at this point because of the length of our triple header here today on TNN, Buckmasters will be seen in its entirety at 9 o'clock Eastern time this evening. So stick around, watch the rest of this race with us, about 45 laps in the finish, as you see what remains of Rob Rizzo's front end. You could see Ruckman taking a look on the inside of Sprague as they went down the back straightaway there. I think these trucks are very even right now. It's the man that wants it the most. See, the yes. main truck he was looking inside, looking outside. Now he's going to try the inside line. Powers he goes way. underneath Ruckman. Nice move. Nice move for Park. Didn't have the kind of day he was hoping for in either of the first two events today the Bush North or modified events. Wouldn't this be something though if he takes it to the house in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. It's not been since 22 races ago at Richmond in 1995 when a non series regular last one of event. Uh, Terry Labonte did it in that instance. Look, Look how close that. they're going through the corner here. I'm telling you. That Steve Park is all the way up. He's making a move on the inside of Sprague down the back straightaway. Joe Rutman's right behind him as they go off into turn three. Here goes Park trying to grab the lead for the first time since lap number eight, and he does it bringing Rutman with him. So Sprague will lead from 101 to 157. Steve Park will take it at 158. As with engine failure, Harry Gant has just taken his truck to the garage area. So Harry will join Jeff Spraker, Kenny Allen, Mike Hurlburt, and Mike Skinner in the garage. Gant done for the day at lap 158 of 200. You see Steve Park there move over to the left side to kind of cut off the angle on Joe Rutman, but I believe Joe Rutman has a little quicker truck down the straightaway. It's going to be exciting all the way to the finish now. To the stripe. There goes Rutman. Uh -uh. There's what you was talking about earlier, buddy. Oh, Joe look, he's offline now, and here comes Rutman. It's all it took. Eli, that's all it ever takes. That wash out right in the center part of the corner where you need to be back in the throttle. You don't need to be chasing it up the hill. Look at Ernie Irvin move in here in fourth place. He seems to be a lot better since making a few adjustments on tire pressure when he stopped. We were all kind of watching closely when Ernie came in during that competition, Yellow. Looked like they made a lot of air pressure adjustments on Ernie's truck. And again, Ernie's truck appeared that it's been loose off the corner, but just watching, trying to watch what air pressure adjustments they made. I believe his whole problem has been back in the center of the corner. The truck hadn't been turning, and that makes the truck loose up off the corner once the front end finally bites. We are at lap 160, just 40 miles from the finish of a great triple header and a super event for the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. We'll be right back. Get gone, as we say back home. He finally got free of Sprague and is trying to drive away if possible. Don't know if he's going to make it or not. There's Steve Park running in third in Kurt Rorick's truck. Lap 164. 36 to go to the conclusion. You know, it looks like Jack Sprague may be moving back in just a little bit on Rutman. We thought maybe he might just start pulling away, but uh, as Jack started off in turn three there, we slowed up just a little bit by a lap truck there. But you see, he is absolutely flying down the straightaway. 
Steve Park, his name has been in a lot of talk about next year, and Glenn was talking with Park yesterday saying, what can a weekend like this with all the TV coverage do for your career? Uh, it's, a, it's a great opportunity. You know, anytime you can get the television exposure, especially with TNN and uh, standing here talking to Glenn Jarrett, you know, uh, it's got to be good for my career, you know, and we've had a couple people approach us, and uh, there's a lot of good opportunities out there, I think, and, uh, you know, for Steve Park, hopefully we'll be hooked up with Chevrolet for a long time. Caution is on the speedway for debris in the corner. A couple of trucks got together with a little brush and a piece of debris just came off onto the speedway. So that six or eight truck length lead that Rutman has has now disappeared at lap 166. There you see the debris right there. Looks like a brake hose or something, but there's some real debris there. That's a tire cutter right there. So while they clean the racetrack, we will break quickly to take care of some business. Head to the finish. We'll be right back. For the from the finish, Rutman, Sprague, and Park upon the restart with Ernie Urban in fourth. Butkey is fifth, Refner is sixth, Bliss is seventh, Hornaday is eighth, Bessie is ninth, and Sedgwick is tenth. There you see Ernie Irvin and Nathan Butkey, fourth and fifth spot. If you're a Butch Miller fan, he's just come back onto the track, 32 laps down as the scramble for the lead comes to the start-finish line. Spring. Goodbye, Joe. You see Sprague there, he had that preferred line going down the front straightaway, going by and made that pass look easy. Up the back straight away they come. Here goes Ernie Irvin inside of Butkey now. That's the fourth place battle. Refner is right in it too and so is Bliss the 44 and the two and there's Hornaday. He's an eighth. Just joining us the number two man in points Mike Skinner. He is in 27th already done for the day with engine problems. 30 laps to go. Jack Sprague with a truck length and a half advantage on Joe Rutman in the 80. Let's go to the Sprague pit. Matt? That's clear, Eli, and I was talking Excuse about Buddy me. talking about uh, Jack Sprague got the preferred line a while ago. The reason he got it is because he has a preferred horsepower. I watched him <laughs> going down the back stretch right before he took the lead. Man, he just drove all over Rutman, stayed on line, and then just absolutely blew him away coming down the front stretch. That truck is awesome down the chutes. What do you say, preferred horsepower? There's yeah. no question about that. He has a good truck, but Rutman's truck, it seems, takes about four or five laps to start coming back in. Now, you see down the straightaway now, there's really not any difference in the way these two trucks run. I think Sprague's very good, but I think Rutman's awfully good, too. 27 miles to go. Somebody's got to show their strong hand here before long. Well, I know Steve Park sitting there in third. Hopes they get to racing side by side and maybe make a little contact and give him that inside lane. Ernie Urban backsliding a bit. Bucky has gone by. There's Bliss in the two. Trying to work the inside against Ernie. It would move Ernie back to sixth if Bliss can get by him. Ernie's truck just not working through the corner. Don't seem like he can get it to stick on the bottom, especially from the center out. I'm watching Hornaday. He's showing a little muscle now. He looks like he's running better as uh, after the changes they made just a little while ago. You see him dropping behind Bliss going down into turn three there. Ernie's just a little bit off in the corners. He's driving really hard into the corner. And now when they pick up the throttle, what's this? Back off the corner they come. Mike Bliss prior to the Richmond race. He had a five race string of a win, four top fives, and a couple of bush poles. We shouldn't be surprised he's running well. Here you see Brian Refter. He's hanging right in there behind these guys, and he's kind of had a pretty uh, active day. I think he's spun out early in the race and he right. was involved in an accident on the front stretch, so he's bounced back from a couple of instances. Right, lap 128, he and Hornaday had the deal here on the main straightaway, the spin. Lap 176, that's the lead battle. Boy, Joe Rutman's using all of the flat to try and get around, but he can't get past Sprague. But he still has 24 more times to try. 
Tom. Flaps to go as we welcome you back to New Hampshire. Late on a cloudy afternoon, early evening. Glad you've spent your day with us here on TNM Motorsports. Six hours of live racing from New Hampshire International Speedway. Butch Miller has just taken his truck to the garage. He is now done for the day, making him the sixth truck to retire. Here's Hornaday. Came awfully close to the wall. Looked as though the right rear might have just rubbed the wall coming out of the number four corner. We'll have to try and take a look back and see, but uh, look as though he might have just brushed the wall with the right rear. Let's take a look again. Of course, we're seeing the left side there, which is unblemished. Let's take a look and see what happened with the he and Ernie. Oh, I guess he did. <laughs> yeah, now does he ever hit the wall? Um, went up, just tagged it yeah, just it a little bit. Sure Seen the concrete fly. Just looked up and saw a little dust flying. Lap 182, 18 laps to go. People at home. Oh, know. and he gets by to the outside and nearly runs into the wall again. That time he and Refner. He swung to the outside to get around Corelli's truck. You know, Eli, what I was going to tell the fans at home, there's 17 to go here. I know our cameras don't show it, but it is getting dark here in Loudon, New Hampshire. You just can't believe how dark it is here. And uh, they're going to make it to the end. But there's 17 to go, and it's getting quite dark. Of course, the cameras with the technology being what it is don't need nearly as much light, but it is getting fairly dark. Ron Hornaday just went into fifth place. He passed Brian Refner, so he's moving up. I know he's using up all the racetrack and part of the wall, but he's doing a pretty good <laughs> job. And the report from his pit, we're hearing that the truck is still running well, but there you can see the right side beaten and bruised after those two shunts with the wall. Did you see the rotors the glowing there on the right front? Say. That'll tell you a little bit how dark it's getting because the darker it gets, the more those rotors will glow. Yeah, you watch that again, folks, as he goes back into turn one particularly. You're able to see the brake rotors really get red hot. Even though this is a mile racetrack and the speeds are, are really high, they enter the corner so fast, the trucks have to use a lot of brake to get it stopped to get into the corner. Let's see if we can see it this time into the turn. Yep, you see it? There it is. And that's the way you can tell that only mentioned earlier that they are really having to use extra brake because of some of the selections they had made and gearing and so on. And when you pull a real high gear or your truck's not turning, that'll make you even use more brake to get it stopped to go down getting in the corner. Up front, Jack Sprague, Rutman, Steve Park. Around they go past Bill Sedgwick, putting him a lap down. He's in the 11th spot, Sedgwick is. They're going to catch a few lap trucks in these final closing laps, and that, as always, at a short track, can play a role in the outcome of the event. Just where one catches the, the lap truck or the other one don't. Larry, what you try to do in a situation like that, if you're leading, you try to pace yourself where you get to the front of the racetrack where you can get by and the guy chasing you cannot make the entrance into the corner just right. Exactly. In the way, and I'm sure Sprague has watched Rutman in his rearview mirror for a number of laps. He knows Joe's truck really works good on the bottom of the racetrack. He's going to have to protect that inside line. Right there is where Sprague's really working. He is going down that straightaway like Glenn said just a second ago. Hendricks really built some pretty good horsepower in all their motors, but this Jack Sprague, he's won nearly, well, he has won every mile race they've had this year. He's won at Phoenix, Nazareth, and Milwaukee, all one-mile tracks, trying to make a sweep of it here today. Lance Norick has just gone to the garage, an exhaust system problem, so he will head to the garage area, and there you see where your favorites are running. This field standing update. Brought to you by the original Vent Visor, the most practical accessory for your truck. It'll be 10 laps to go next time by. It should be a good 10 laps. Nail biting time. I'll guarantee you one thing. Rutman's not backing off any. He's driving deep down into turn three, as you can see, closing three or four truck lengths as they go off into turn three. But Sprague is back in the throttle, and when he gets back in it, that truck is awesome. Jack Sprague was second at Homestead. In addition to all those wins we told you about, there's the eighth place battle.
No Bessie and Brian Refner. Bessie's acquitted himself well today. He really has. He stayed on the lead lap. He's been back there racing hard and uh, hanging out in the top 10, looking for a good top 10 finish. And for you Dave Resende's fans, Dave is finally taking his truck to the garage here. Right, 23rd spot is where he will likely end up today. One hundred and ninety one laps nine to go for Jack Sprague. You know his crew chief Dennis Connor just one of those guys who caution is on the speedway problems in turn three Doug George Doug George's ortho truck has gone up in smoke and caution on lap number one hundred and ninety two. Wow looked as though he might have lost the engine. Doug George brings out the caution. Now how extensive is the cleanup. There is again not going to be a finish under caution. They have a green a white and a checkered flag lap. But it looks as though they know it's potentially a terminal problem there. So Doug George will join Dave Resendiz Lance Norick. Butch Miller, Harry Gant, Mike Skinner, Mike Hurlbert, Kenny Allen, and Jeff Spraker in the garage. This is definitely not over with yet, though. This is going to bunch these guys back up, and uh, who could get the best restart? Inside now, the final 10 laps of the race. So there is a 10 lap rule in effect here, only the single file restart with the lead trucks up front. You know, we were talking about Dennis Connor before, Larry. For whatever reason, one of the guys who hasn't gotten a ton of attention over the years may be one of the most efficient crew chiefs going, and for some reason just hasn't always gotten the headlines that he deserves. He's a good one for Jack Sprague and Hendrick. He really is. You know, I think the biggest thing about Dennis is maybe the reason he hadn't got the attention that he probably deserves is Dennis is always working on the car or the truck. You know, he's always in there digging and he's not out there doing the interviews and talking to the people. He's always got his nose to the grindstone and working hard to make that truck the best he can. Let's go down a pit road, Matt Yoakum. Well, Dennis, you headed down to a two-truck race. You did not want to see that yellow come out with eight laps to go. I definitely didn't want to see the, the yellow come out. Uh, we're just a little bit too loose on the restart, so he's going to have his hands full keeping uh, the 80 truck and possibly the 18 there behind him. And like we saw at Richmond a couple of nights ago, anything can happen on the restart. So uh, I don't know. I sure hate that came out, but... He's done a good job on the restarts all day long in the Quaker State Chevrolet, so he's just got one more time to do it. Well, does Rutman have something for him? Let's go up and ask Glenn. We'll find that from Freddie Fryer. Freddie, it's obvious that Joe's truck looks like it's working a little better through the corners, but good gosh, what horsepower that 24 truck's got. Is this the last gasp effort? You got anything for him now? Well, Joe says the Roush Ford is really good, but said the 24 truck's just equally good, as good as he is. Uh, He's a little better in the corner, but the 24 is pulling us down that back stretch pretty much. Think you can get him on a restart? Uh, Joe's going to give it all he's got. He's a good guy, and I know he can do it. Well, that's all you can ask. Give it all you got and see what happens. But I tell you what, if, if uh, Sprague's truck's just a little bit loose with all that power, it may get real loose on that restart. So that's the update from the pit lane. Lap 193, the caution is still flying. And again, remember that after track cleanup here with what appears to be a lost engine for Doug George, uh, regardless of the lap count, even if we exceed 200, it will still be a green flag, a white flag, and then the checkered flag laps. Coming up as soon as we move aside, Hank Parker outdoors. That'll be coming up next here on TNN Motorsports. Remember also Bill Jordan's Real Tree Outdoors coming up at 8 o'clock Eastern time tonight and Buckmasters at 9 o'clock Eastern time. All kind of rescheduled a bit because of the length of our triple header here in New Hampshire, but we appreciate your indulgence. Don't forget, coming up next weekend, a ton of racing right here on TNN Motorsports. And there's the schedule. The NASCAR Bush Series in action. The MBNA 200 from the Monster Mile at Dover Downs in Delaware. That's Saturday at 1. Then race talk coming up at 6 o'clock Saturday evening as we take your phone calls live. Then Sunday, NHRA Today, followed by the NASCAR Winston Cup Series at Dover, the MBNA 500. Then Rick Benjamin will have race day and then back to NHRA action. Ralph Shaheen and the fellows with the Keystone Nationals from Reading, Pennsylvania. 
All of that coming up on TNN Motorsports. Hope you can join us next weekend. Later this evening, a recap of all of our action here, plus Kenny Wallace's win in Richmond, Ernie Urban's victory last night. It's all coming up on the PM edition of Race Day with Rick Benjamin this evening at 10 o'clock Eastern time. All the latest racing news, it's live, and as you'd expect, right here on TNN Motorsports. How are you guys looking for Dover, Delaware, Larry McReynolds? Uh, the car done, ready to go? We're actually going to run both the cars that we uh, had at Darlington last week. Again, had to put sides on both of them, replace a lot of pieces, and both cars was awfully strong there in the spring. Uh, Ernie finished fourth. Dale led the thing for quite a bit and got tangled up in a wreck mm. about from someone's engine letting go. So we feel good going to Dover. Feel good about these last uh, six or seven races. It'll be a heck of a way to finish this 1996 season and a great jumping off point for 97, too. It really is, you know, and again, the guys at Robert Yates Racing, it's it's just unbelievable how hard they've worked and, and how they've clung together. And, and you know, we, we aren't even in our new shop yet. Yeah. We're in a shop that isn't big enough hardly for one team, but we've been working there together. And the, probably the scariest thing is making sure we don't lose any of our unity as we move to this 46,000 square foot facility. It's going to be something interesting uh, when you finally get away from working shoulder to shoulder, literally. What's your gut tell you about the, the chase for the championship? Well, the Hendricks cars are going to be tough. You know, they're both there every week. They don't falter. You know, Jeff Gordon, he's just there every week. He qualifies up front, which keeps him out of trouble. And, uh, of course, Terry Labonte, he's been there all year long. And uh, we're going to work hard to keep Dale Jarrett in that championship hunt and get Ernie Irvin in them top five. And if I can watch both those guys walk up on that stage in New York, regardless if it's second and fifth or third and eighth, I feel like we've had a successful season. No arguments with that. You guys have uh, done yourselves awfully proud. We continue under caution here. The field now getting the one to go signal from Chris Morgan. So it'll be green at lap 197. Taking us to a three lap shootout to the finish to settle it here. The final event of our triple header at New Hampshire International Speedway. Don't forget, next weekend, we showed you there'll be coverage from Reading, Pennsylvania of the NHRA Winston drag racing scene. NHRA Today with Steve Evans next Sunday at 11 o'clock Eastern time. It'll be a live special hour edition from Reading, Pennsylvania. Steve will bring you up to speed on all the latest drag racing news. That's next Sunday, one hour from Reading, Pennsylvania, NHRA Today. Eli with three to go. I tell you, a truck that has really been good these last few 10 or 15 laps, and that's a truck in fourth place, Nathan Buckley. Mm -hmm. He has really been strong. Don't know if he has enough laps to get to the front, but uh, it's going to be interesting to watch him, too. But well, we had talked about him about an hour and a half or so ago, saying how well this young guy has done over the uh, periods that he took over from Bobby Gill. Well, he had closed in there, and he was running Steve Park down. Whether he has the truck to do it right now, I don't know. But on hot tires, he was definitely gaining on the lead truck. All right, folks, here we go. It'll be lap 197 of 200. Jack Sprague trying to make a sweep of the one-mile tracks on the tour this year. Here we go. Quick jump for Hornaday. Hornaday there too. coming down the outside. You can pass on the start like that on the outside. Definitely what he did was legal. Uh, before you cross the start-finish line, once the green flag's out, you can pass to the right-hand side. Spray trying to pull away. Rutman stays with him in that white Jack Roush truck. Here comes Hornaday. Here comes Hornaday to second. Here goes Hornaday <laughs> to the lead. Did we not talk about this about 100 laps ago? Is he brave oh, or what? Jack Sprague oh, and right. Hornaday get together. Oh, and there goes Butkey hard into the wall. Hard into the wall goes Butkey. Caution flag is on the speedway. Caution on the speedway at lap 198. Just remember, we cannot end our caution, so when they do get this wreck cleaned up, we will get a green-white checkered, whenever it may be. We'll take another look. You just got a view of Bucky's truck shooting out of the pack of traffic. Let's see what happened. Bliss is behind Bliss him. Bliss is right in the rear of him there. I, they made a little bit of contact. That shoots Bucky Ooh. head on into the wall. What a hard Man. impact. He really hit hard. Hopefully everything's okay. I did see him moving around in there and take the steering wheel off just a second ago, so I, I think he's okay. A major league hit into the wall, though. Yeah, there you can see Butkey moving around and a lot of debris. We'll take another look at it. 
Again, Bliss was right behind him, and after it turned, the truck got a grip and went right into the outside wall. Okay, Steve Park there kind of checked up. You see Nathan Buck, he had to check up, and Mike Bliss got into the rear. He turns him to the right, and look at this impact when he hit the outside wall. Missed Ernie Irvin Just by, barely about, missed Ernie. by an eyelash. That would have certainly uh, caused some other trucks to have problems, but would have cushioned the lick quite a bit. There goes Butkey walking into the ambulance, so he'll be heading to the infield care center here at New Hampshire International Speedway. And now the laps have stopped counting on the uh, scoreboard. At this point, we will have uh, the green, the white, and the checker once the track is cleaned up. But Glenn, how about that restart for Hornaday, huh? Uh, it was a good one. It was an awfully good one. But uh, Hornaday just radioed into his crew and expressed concern that NASCAR may not have liked that restart. But he says that the guy in front of him evidently missed a shift or didn't take off. But we saw it. It was clean. He went to the right-hand side. You can do it on the outside. You can't make that move on the left side underneath, but you can do it on the outside. So he seems to be okay. Now watch again all that took place here. There's Hornaday to the outside of Rutman. You see Park right there has to check up just okay, right. Okay, Rutman got a little Rutman bit loose. got sideways yep. there. That's why he checked up. Yeah. Butkey hit Steve Park, and then Bliss was... Uh, Stacks everybody up. In the back of Nathan, he got overcorrected and right into the outside retaining Lord, board. that was a hit. You know, just talking about Ron Hornaday's restart, again, NASCAR stresses that on the start of the race, everyone stay in line till you cross the start-finish line. But on a restart, they designate an area where the, the lead truck can start the event. And also the starters waving the green flag. And when those two things happen, you, have, you cannot pass to the left before the start-finish line, but you can pass to the right, just as Ron Hornaday did. For those of you joining us here at the top of the hour, hoping to see Hank Parker outdoors, we are still live with you here at New Hampshire International Speedway at the tail end of what has been an outstanding triple header of racing for you, NASCAR style. But we are overstaying our bounds just a tad to make sure we get the end of this race in for everybody. So the Hank Parker Outdoors show will be joined in progress as soon as we leave the air. And then it will be replayed in its entirety at 9.30 this evening. So rescheduling things, Bill Jordan's Real Tree Outdoors will go at 8 o'clock tonight. We've got Buckmasters at 9 o'clock this evening and then the full edition of Hank Parker Outdoors coming up at 9.30 this evening, all here on TNN as we stay right with you through the finish of what will be better than a six-hour live telecast from New Hampshire here today. Well, now that they've watched Hornaday take that move to the outside, you can bet those front trucks up there will move over closer to the wall where he cannot pass on the right side. You can't pass on the left, so if you close that door, there's no way he can make that kind of gains. Right now, track cleanup is what we are waiting on out in turn number four from where Nathan Butke's truck came to a stop. Of course, once the track cleanup gets done, we will have a green flag, then the next time around the white flag, then the next time around the checkered flag. But while track cleanup does take place, why don't we all spend a few moments together learning a bit about the man who is leading this race right now, the driver of the Quaker State truck, Jack Sprague. I started racing, I guess, when I was about 17 years old at the local dirt tracks and progressed my way to the late miles asphalt type cars. And February of 1987, uh, moved to North Carolina to pursue a racing career and try to make it to Winston Cup. I spent, uh, I think, three years on, you know, limited schedules in the Bush Series and had a little success, but, you know, not enough to, to probably make it. It was hard. It was uh, frustrating, you know, just never getting in the right situation or being in a good situation and things not work out right or just for whatever reason. And, uh, it got to where it was pretty discouraging. I had to get away from it, you know, to see what was wrong, and I just had enough, you know. I didn't want to quit racing, so I just raced my own stuff. And ran uh, Winston Racing Series for that national championship and won 21 out of 22 races, and uh, got a chance to drive a truck. I couldn't really imagine racing pickup trucks, but bottom line, it was the best opportunity I had at that point, so I decided to do it, and if it worked, fine. If it didn't, I still had my own stuff, but Luckily, it worked out really well, and, you know, after Indianapolis last year, 
you know, the team I was with pretty much came to an end, and luckily, I mean, it's just a timing deal, and finally, everything worked out for the best, and I drove Hendrick's truck the rest of the year. I'm probably my, my own worst critic. Uh, you know, as far as I'm concerned, the team's better than I am, and it's, it's hard for me to, I can't sit here and tell you I'm great, because I don't think I'm great. I was hung on racing so hard for so many years, and had tunnel vision for it that I, I've missed a lot of years of my family and my life. But uh, since my daughter's come along, and it's, race is not number one to me anymore. You know, she is. And this, it, it basically helped my race, and I never thought it would, but it did. It made me realize that I don't have to do this. You know, it's not the most important thing in my life. But uh, it's working out rather well. I got my priorities in order, so to speak. and. Uh, I just wish I wouldn't have missed so many years not realizing, you know, what was most important. Jack Sprague, very talented young man who does now indeed have his priorities in order, and uh, it's been good to see him step out of the uh, shadows and get himself a big-time name and a big-time ride. We are still in the midst of cleanup here at New Hampshire International Speedway. After the Nathan Butkey accident in turn number four, we have now exceeded our 200 lap distance and obviously we'll finish this race, as we've said, under green, white and caution. Let's get an update on uh, the Joe Rutman truck, Glenn. You were just now getting one to go down here on pit road, Eli, so we're going to be back to action. But how would you like to be Joe Rutman? Now, he's got one lap to try and pass Jack Sprague and win this thing, which he looks like he's got one of the best trucks, but also filling his rearview mirror up is Ron Hornaday. He's got to be concerned about Hornaday making that same move on the outside of him on that restart. So Joe's got to be looking forward and back. And Hornaday himself, every position that he gains right now, that's five more points that he puts between himself and Mike Skinner, who's already out of this thing. Now let's take you back a few moments ago. Remember that last restart? And all that took place. This is not live, but this is the last restart after the Doug George engine problem. There's a great jump that Hornaday got. And he just kept on going. When he made that move to the outside, committed, that means that the green flag was displayed. Now we are back live with you at about seven minutes after six Eastern time on this Sunday evening. Getting set to wrap it up. The field will get the green flag this time. They'll come around and get the white flag, and they'll come around and get the checker, and this baby will be in the books. All right, let's see. Sprague's got a pretty decent-sized lead right there coming off the corner. Joe Ruckman tried to time that start, and it didn't work. Jack Sprague looked in the mirror and said, if you're going to stay that far back, I'm going to start accelerating. He dropped him about two or three truck lengths down the front straightaway there. He'll be coming to the white flag this time by. Here comes Rutman. Got a good run off turn two. Hornaday not quite in the picture like he was on that last restart. Here goes Rutman for the lead. Coming to the white flag, Rutman trying the outside. Okay, it's down to this. Who's going to run fast down this front straightaway? We white. talked about horsepower. White flag. Joe Rutman going for his third career win in the series. Sprague has the inside. Here comes Hornaday into your picture now. This is for the win. Look at this car. Truck go down that back straightaway. Jack Sprague is strong, but Rutman fights back to the outside. Here they come. One more series of turns. Sprague oh. gets it to Rutman. Here comes Hornaday. Hornaday to the inside. Hornaday is going to win. The series point leader takes the checkered flag in New Hampshire. Holy cow. <laughs> wow. Unbelievable. Finish. Here you have Jimmy Hensley against the inside retaining wall on the front stretch. Why am I not right surprised side. after six hours today? What a finish. What a finish for the series point leader. And remember, Skinner is going to come home in 27th spot. Is that ever going to spread the series point standings just a bit, at least as far as Skinner is concerned? Hornaday wins it all. I'm still rubbing my eyes. That actually happened. Hornaday looked like he was out of it. A little contact going into turn three. He drives to the bottom, goes by the front two trucks. What a win. That was remarkable. Let's look at that. This one's worth another look. <laughs> Maybe a couple. <laughs>
There's Rutman on the outside. You see the 24 get a little loose. He touches Rutman on the quarter panel there. Watch the evasive action that he takes there. Hornaday drives down on the flat part of the racetrack and accelerates off turn four. There is Hornaday heading down the pit lane. Doug Williams, watch this all unfold, Matt. Doug Williams, they don't get any wilder than this one. I'll tell you what, that was a sweetheart of a win. Well, Doug Williams is climbing on top of the Napa truck, joining the rest of the crew as they're heading to Victory Lane. What a finish, what a win, and what a day here on TNN Motorsports. We're not leaving you yet. We're going to head to Victory Lane and sort this one out with Ron Hornaday when we come back to New Hampshire in just a moment. By Duraliner, beating the leader is tough. What a finish. Time for us to head to the Chevrolet Victory Lane. One car company has won more races in the history of NASCAR. Genuine Chevrolet. Glenn, it's all yours. Okay, Ron, well, you know, folks, now you saw it right here. Some days it just be pays better to be lucky than good, but you made a tremendous move to miss all that stuff. Dennis Fisher, Gordy Harbinger, everybody out there back at the shops done a great job with this whole team. Uh, Napa Chevrolet, everybody. I tell you what. We had a 10th place truck. We changed the gear before that, and as soon as we started the race, I said, darn, I'm gonna kick myself in the butt. And all the guys said, what's the matter, the gear? And I said, yeah, that was my call. We keep coming in, Doug Williams and everybody keeps making this thing looser and looser, and I tore the front tire off the thing the first half, and uh, I said, I ain't gonna do it the second half. And all of a sudden, we came in for that last highway break, took a couple rounds out. Napa Chevrolet was awesome, I'll tell you what. Uh, Goodyear came out with a real nice tire, a little hard, when you can see that slip and slides coming there, and I knew them guys were gonna race hard. Jack said he was gonna win this race, and. Uh, he tried. He tried awful hard, so uh, I just rolled along there and got the inside, and that's what it took. Ron Hornaday, a great win for him here today. He's on the way to that championship. Big, big lead over Mike Skinner now, Eli. 147 points over Skinner, 171 over Sprague. As we take a look at the finishing order, there you see how it finally shook down. Joe Rutman comes home finally in eighth spot after the action up in the corner. Jimmy Hensley in ninth and Bill Sedgwick in tenth. Taking you a little bit further back, there you see the top 20 of the 30 who ran here today at New Hampshire International Speedway and taking you all the way back those who had problems or went to the garage area here fairly early quick reminder coming up immediately as soon as we re uh, leave the air hank parker outdoors will be joined in progress so there will be a full replay of hank at 9 30 this evening but we'll pick him up in progress here as soon as we leave the air the p.m edition of race day rick benjamin and the crew standing by that's 10 o'clock eastern time this evening with a recap of all the action from around the world of racing and of course next week we'll be with you from the monster mile bush series racing on saturday followed by race talk sunday nhra today steve evans hosting a one-hour special from reading pennsylvania then the nascar winston cup teams in the mbna 500 race day at 4 30 and then back to reading for the keystone nationals all coming up next saturday and sunday here on tnn motorsports larry mcreynolds congratulations again on the win yesterday for you and ernie thanks for joining us buddy baker glenn Jarrett, Matt Yoakum. It's been a busy, busy day. Our congratulations to all three of our winners today. Ted Christopher in the Bush North Series, Tony Hirschman for the NASCAR Featherlight Modified Tour, and that man, Ron Hornaday, who survives to win the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. For the entire TNN Motorsports crew here in Loudoun, New Hampshire, I'm Eli Gold. Thanks for spending your six hours of this day with us. We'll talk to you next week. So long, everybody.